So we have a 48 volt golf cart and we want to do some maintenance on this. And the tools you're going to want to have for owning a golf cart would be uh, inexpensive but good Easy Red brand battery hydrometer. Get these on Amazon. And a simple uh, voltmeter, multimeter. And when I come out to make a, take a look at uh, my golf cart, I want to look at my cables and look for any kind of corrosion or a, a uh, reduction of the metal. So when I start seeing stuff like this, the metal has become thin because of the decay and corrosion. So we'll go ahead and we definitely want to replace this particular cable here. I've got corrosion back here, so I'm going to clean, take this nut off, clean it, and then use a, um, a uh, I call it no ox. It's a uh, non-oxidation uh, conductive grease that you can get. And so going first check here, we're gonna look at the positive and negative of the battery just to see what the voltage is. And you see we got 8.4. And then I wanna take a look at the cells and I can see that we do have some dry cells. So the idea would be to, you don't want to have any kind of exposed plates. So this one actually has water. This one is quite low, but it's still moist. You can see it. And this one is a little bit more dry. Take your hydrometer, do a full absorb, do a full, and then you see the specific gravity there, which is nice and high, which means this battery at this particular cell is able to, uh, would be relatively healthy. So you have to do a check on all of the cells and there's not enough water in this one to actually do the hydrometer check. So we're actually gonna replace all these batteries for the fact that I look at the date code here and I can see it has a K and a seven. So that'd be 2017. Batteries are uh, seven years old. Gear, customer is telling me that the range has diminished and the car's starting to slow down. So we'll just go ahead and replace these with uh, six new ones. Flip the golf cart into tow mode key is off of course and then you have 48 volts here and here and you can certainly take off these cables first but what I like to do is I like to move up the chain here and just take off I break the series here so I don't have 48 volts here and here so the voltage is less and now by removing this cable the series is interrupted so I can safely now take this off the negative and then take the positive off and I may actually reattach them and then lastly reattach the series cable. So we'll start by taking off the hold down hardware and um, after these, inner, these series cables are taken off and then take this off and then start lifting these out. Quite a few of the cables on the negative terminal. So what I'll use is just a very inexpensive carabiner just to keep them all together. The last thing you wanna do is reconnect your batteries and miss a cable. So the negatives are all gathered there. There's no voltage coming in because we broke the series. And now we'll pull the positives off and put them on a carabiner as well. Moving into this cart, taking the cables off, you find a uh, terminal cover and then you try to remove it and you can see where the corrosion has completely destroyed the cable lug. So this cable has not been connected. I'm not even sure how I was able to even back up the cart. So this jumper from negative to positive will be replaced and I just wanted to show you this chemical you can get or I guess it's a jelly um, I believe it's on Amazon I love this stuff by simply applying this to the cable ends to the terminal actually apply it to the terminal threads the base and then the ends of the cable it'll slow down if not prevent this kind of growth and decay your cables will last longer if you're lucky enough, why well, if you take off the nuts off the hold down, if you're lucky enough that this piece of plastic hold down comes off, then you're doing great. Uh, this is the reason why I always use Novox grease on these threads and I do not over tighten the nuts when you put this back together. In some cases, this piece does not come off and you have to use a uh, breaker bar very carefully at the ends to give it a lift just to break the seal. Sometimes it doesn't even work and you have to start cutting. Hopefully that's not your case. In this case, that we were lucky that it came right off. 
you're going to want to find yourself a battery lifting strap carry strap whatever you get and you can get this on amazon as well if you don't have one and we're going to hook the batteries here and here and lift them out one at a time This is the hold down hardware. What we want to do is get in there with a wire wheel and we want to go ahead and get those threads cleaned up and then put some of that NOAX on there. Yeah, as you can see, we got most of the debris out of there and we're ready to start putting the batteries back in. If you do have any kind of corrosion, now it's time to take some Rust-Oleum and clean it, vacuum it, and give it a spray. What I do is I put the back row in first then i put the hold down studs hardware in before i start replacing the front row otherwise i don't think you'll be able to get these put in there so you don't want to have to lift these batteries out twice if you don't have to okay when you're putting back on this hold down hardware it sometimes gets a little difficult trying to find the separation in the battery so what you're going to want to do is start with one side get the back of it fit in there. What you want to do, your goal is to get this nut on there and slowly cinch it down. And then once you get some depth of the bracket in penetrating in between these cracks of the batteries, move over to this side, just get a nut on there and then use a cordless drill or something and slowly cinch it down while pulling these batteries out of the way. You'll find it finds, it'll eventually find its home and you won't, accidentally break this thing by hitting it with a hammer. Starting with, so putting the cables back on, you can see we get the no ox grease on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that all the, I do the largest lug first and then go to the smallest. And then we're gonna wanna use a split washer. And in this case, I'm also gonna use a flat washer just so that we get a good bite on there. Okay, so we're going to put a flat washer down. And just, And then you're going to put a split washer on top of that. Never, never use wing nuts on these things, guys. I don't think anyone would do that, but you just don't want to do that. So flat washer. Split washer. And then my hex nut on top of that. Here we go. Okay, so we get the interconnected cables put back on, obviously the hold down hardware. Uh, the switch has been put back into run mode. I'm gonna give you some troubleshooting tips. This is specifically for an R, uh, EasyGo RXV uh, or similar with this type of ignition. If you got the batteries put in and you turn the key and you have no power, because it just happened to me, look for this blue cable here it's called a reed switch it needs to be intact if you put the batteries in and i keep trying to get, let you see it here this little housing likes to separate if the housing is separated or you've crushed this wire it has to be repaired and make contact to the it finds its way uh, eventually to the positive terminal that's the reed switch and it needs to be uh it has to be have a connection for the golf cart to operate. Okay, hope that helps you guys. Take care. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Talk to you soon. Bye.